Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Saturday Morning Cartooning, uh, brought to you by the Barron Art Center in Woodbridge Township, New Jersey. Uh, I'll be your instructor, Brandon. And this class is going to go over uh, famous cartoon characters. We're going to learn about uh, how they were originated, we're going to learn about their original creators, and then we're going to draw them together. And in fact, the first one we're going to learn about uh, this week is uh, a character that most of you probably know from uh, either a cereal box or a vitamin bottle, but probably a lot of uh, other people know them from a, an actual television show that was on uh, a while ago, and it is The Flintstones. So let's take a look at the slides. Uh, the Flintstones was uh, actually a, uh, an animated primetime sitcom that was originated by these guys. This is William Hanna and Joseph Barbera. Now these two guys had a studio called Hanna-Barbera Studios and they are responsible for a lot of the uh, cartoon characters that we know and love. Uh, and just to name a few, we got Yogi Bear, we got Scooby-Doo, we got Huckleberry Hound, we have Tom and Jerry, and of course uh, the Flintstones. Now the Flintstones is actually um, a satire. It was a spoof on a 1950s show called The Honeymooners. And for those of you who know that particular um, show, the characters uh, are very similar. Uh, for example, the main character, Ralph Cramden, is very, very similar to uh, Fred Flintstone. The show was an immediate hit. Uh, it uh, debuted in the 1960s. Uh, and it was the longest running prime time animated show. It was on for a very, very long time. It is still on TV in some places. So why don't we come over here? We're going to start drawing. Before we get started, you're going to need, of course, paper. You're probably going to need a lot of paper. You want to get a pencil that you like the best and probably one that has a good eraser on it uh, because you're going to make mistakes and that's okay. I still make mistakes. I'll probably make mistakes right now. We'll see. <laughs> Um, and also a permanent marker, a black marker, um, and you, depending on how big you draw, uh, a, uh, a fine point or even uh, an ultra fine point would be good. But if all you have is a ballpark, a ballpoint pen, go ahead and just use that. That's fine. All right. And I'm going to be drawing um, in pencil first, and then I'm going to be finishing the drawing with um, permanent marker. Um, what I usually tell my students when we're drawing, uh, especially when we're drawing cartoons, is you want to start with a very light touch with your pencil. For the purposes of today, though, because I want the camera to pick up the pencil lines, I'm going to be pressing a little bit darker than I normally do. Um, and also what I tell my students is when wherever we're um, learning how to draw a character, it's good to have a picture of the character so you could use it as a reference. That's really good. And what you want to do is you want to study that character and break it down into basic shapes. Once you have those basic shapes done, it's going to be a lot easier to, for it to come together. But you'll see it as we draw it together. All right, so let's get started. Just lightly sketch in that shape of the head. Almost like, almost like a, a letter D, like a big puppy letter D. Uh, and then we're also going to put in some face lines here. These face lines, uh, if you are... Um, if you're a student of mine, know that our face lines uh, keep us um, on point of where to put the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the features of the face. And that's why we're putting in this um, little plus sign here as the face lines. That's going to help us uh, decide where we put the eyes and the nose and whatnot. All right. Once we have this head shape in, we can start putting in that body shape. And if we take a look at the body shape, it's very um, it's almost like an almond shape. So let's just draw in that almond shape down here. But he's got a narrow section for his feet once we get down there. And it's sort of just like ended with a little uh, jagged line for his uh, jagged um, suit. All right, and the most, probably the trickiest part is going to be the arms and the feet. Uh, so let's do those first, get them out of the way. Uh, particularly this arm right here. So let's just draw in this line, starting from right where his cheek is going to be. Right around here, we're going to draw it out, and then come back in this way. All right? And he's sort of putting his hand on his chest. So we're also going to, once we have this line in right here, we're going to fill it in 
another line here. And it looks strange right now, but it's going to come together. It's going to be one finger, another finger, and then this third finger is going to go down into a palm of his hand. I went a little too far with that. What's interesting about a lot of cartoon characters, uh, even today, they're uh, animated, especially animation characters, usually animated with three fingers and a thumb instead of four fingers and a thumb. And that is because you want to be able to fit all those fingers in there. And the thumb is going to be right there. Right. I'm just going to leave that there for now. The second arm is going to come around here, and if we take a look at the original drawing over here, it's coming around, and uh, his this arm is going around his back. So it'll be one less hand we have to draw, and that's okay by me. I'm just going to draw this line in like this. All right. And then we're going to draw his uh, sleeve, which comes down like this. All right. And then just his arm going in this way. Right. Once we have that in, now let's uh, take a break from the body and we're going to go back to the head. Um, let's do his hair. I always loved, I, when I was a kid, I used to draw Fred Flintstone all the time, and I loved doing his hair. It was so easy. A lot easier than most hair. Uh, what you're going to start is right here. He sort of like has a part right here, and he's got almost like the top of a palm tree over here, and then something like a comet. Uh, going sweeping over one one uh, side of his head. It's actually quite easy to draw. From here, you're just going to draw out and go back in and then a little further out and then go back in that way. All right, and then you're going to put those little top of the palm tree parts right here. One, two, three, four. Depends on how uh, the artist does it. Three or four little pieces of hair on this side. Uh, and let's do his nose. Uh, our, this is where the face line is going to come in because the nose is going to be drawn, usually starts right where those two lines intersect. So we're going to draw a nose going out this way. Coming back in. Okay. And now uh, this shape right here, we're actually going to make it a little bit more concave. That means it's going to go bend in the opposite direction than what I have. All right. And we're going to give him his two eyes, one this way, and one on the other side of that one. All right, we're going to put in those pupils. It may look, um, especially with pencil lines, pencil lines, because we're going to be erasing them, you can be a little bit looser with them. Once we do the inking, that's when you're really going to have to think about what we are putting down what lines we're keeping. For example, these face lines, we're not going to be keeping. It's not going to be part of the finished drawing. We're going to be erasing that later on. So another reason why you want to draw nice and light. Um, but let's get back to uh, his face. Now where his nose stops, that's where we're going to start his top lip. That's going to come down this way. This is a very... Um, uh, famous way of drawing uh, lips. You'll see it in the Flintstones, and you'll see it in the futuristic counterpart, the Jetsons. They all have these kinds of uh, lips. To me, they always look like shark fins. I don't know why. All right, so we're going to draw the top lip, and then the bottom lip is going to come down this way. And we're going to finish it with just a little line going down. Right. Once you got that point in, you're going to draw a little line right there for his tongue. And you're going to draw a little line right here, and that's going to be the opposite side of his mouth. We'll be darkening in this section later on. All right. Um, let's just extend the nose up just a little bit, and then we're going to draw his five o'clock shadow. That would this would this be, it. or his stubble, his caveman stubble. Let's just draw that straight down like that. Uh, we're going to add on his ear. Again, 
uh, the Flintstones had a really unique style. I love the way they do their ears. Almost looks just like a little boomerang right here. Really not too much detail in that ear. And then that side of his head. We're going to go back in with other little details later on. But let's move on to the, um, well, his tie. And then we're going to finish up with his feet. And once we're done with that, we can start inking and be good to go. Let's do the tie first. We're going to do the that little triangular knot there. We're going to do that right at the base of his uh, the bottom leg. It's like a little squarish knot. And some depending on how um, big you drew the fingers, um, part of the tie is going to be underneath his fingers. So it's going to be as if it's drawn. You know, the, the, the fabric goes underneath those fingers. So just skip a little line and then start again here. Two. Got his ragged caveman style clothing. So. His tie has little tears in it. And then we're going to do his collar. Again, I always love... And if you look at this particular character, it's like... Um, Fred Flintstone doesn't have a neck. So it's actually quite easy to draw. Uh, let's put in the collar going out this way. Coming back in. Again, I'm putting a little piece of ragged caveman cloth right there. And then the other side is going to come out this way, cutting off part of his, his jowl, just a little bit. And coming back in towards. Looking good already. All right, let's slightly darken in his, his suit here. And we're just going to draw his feet coming down. Well, we're going to draw a little basic shapes first before we get too detailed. Um, if any of you have ever been in any one of my classes, when I talk about drawing cartoon feet, they are uh, the, notoriously hard for all artists to do. Feet are not easy to accomplish. And one of the things I tell my students is, especially with hands and feet, uh, don't spend too much time on them. Uh, there's a lot of artists out there who, um, uh, a lot of cartoonists, who will draw the hands and the feet in a very stylized way so that it doesn't have to be 100% realistic. Uh, Hannah and Barbera were very famous for that too. Certainly doesn't, it has just a suggestion of real life. And again, just like the hands, uh, Fred Flintstone only has three toes on one foot. Or at least three uh, visible toes. There might be one that's not visible to the viewer, depending on where they're standing. Well, let's just put the basic shape of the feet in first, just like this. We're going to sketch on one foot here, where the foot's going to go, and then another one right here, and where the toes are going to come. All right. Now we can go back in and add in a little bit more detail. So we're going to draw down this way. We're going to add, draw a little suggestion of one toe there, one toe there, and a third toe there. Got the little ball of his foot going right into the other side. Now this one, it's almost like coming out and um, this leg is cutting off uh, what's visible from this leg. So we're going to draw this one as if it's a little bit closer to the viewer. So it'll appear to be a little bit larger, not much, just slightly. Draw one toe there. One toe there, one toe there. All right. And if you look, you can see that's where his ankle bone is. Just a little suggestion of a little ankle bone. All right, guess what, guys? We're ready to start inking. And usually what I tell my students is, uh, we have a motto in our class. Whenever we start inking um, a character, what I say to the students is, think before you ink. You want to think about the lines that you're keeping and the lines that we're not keeping. You don't want to ink the lines that you're not keeping because once you ink it, you can't erase it. For example, the big one is we're not going to be inking the face lines. We're not going to be inking the line that is going over this part of his arm here and this part of his hand here. 
all right so just be wary of some of those inks you know before we start inking i'm going to just sketch in some of those triangular um spots on his suit all right let's start inking um let's do this hand first get it out of the way all right in a nice smooth motion you know how we were very like rough and sketchy with the pencil like that you don't want to do that when you start inking when you're inking, you want to do a nice smooth motion. And that's why it's very important to think before you do that. So in a nice smooth motion, let's do this one finger here, second finger here, third finger going down, and the palm of his hand. Don't forget the thumb right there. And we're going to do the arm going around this way. Right. Um, while we're at it, let's just do the time. Remember, the fabric is going behind those fingers, so you're not going to draw a straight line going through those fingers. Otherwise, it just won't look like. Now it looks like the fabric is going behind his fingers. Right. Let's do the other collar. Now we can do this arm. Let's we can give that a little bit of a um, little texture there. Another little um, example of caveman clothes, that, that ripped look. We can do since that one arm was easy because it's going right behind his body. And then we can go down and do the ripped up. Right from some suit at the bottom. Don't forget that line right there. Color in those little triangular animal fur spots. Alright. And before we do the feet, let's do the, the main part of the head over here. Here. Let's color that in. And there's two little bits of hair at the top of his head like that. And then before we do any of this, start with the nose because the nose is the one part that's coming out at the viewer first. Lip. Bottom lip. Tongue. Remember I said we're gonna darken that in like that so it looks like the inside of his mouth. This cheek right here, concave part of his head, one eye, other eye, pupils. You could leave a little bit of the white, or you can darken it in 100%. It's up to you. And we're going to draw in his spider part shadow, his ear, and then the side of his head. Let's go back down. Oh, you know what we should do? Let's give him some expressive eyebrows. And usually he has a little line right there to mix to his eye. And let's finish up with his feet down here. Do one leg, top of the foot. One toe, two toe, three toe. Ball of the foot, going behind that foot. And we could also add on a little um, suggestion of a toenail right there. Darken this in. Then another suggestion of a toenail, and then a third toe right here. And you pretty much have a completed drawing of Fred Flintstone. But it's not 100% complete. What do we have to do next? We have to erase those original pencil lines. That's why we need a good eraser. So go back over. And the good thing is, when you're using a permanent marker like this, you can erase right over it and it's not going to smudge. This won't work with like a Crayola watercolor marker. You'll need a permanent marker. But be careful around your tabletops and furniture with this. Go ahead and just erase right over it. Alright, and once all those pencil lines are gone, you have a 100% complete drawing of it. 
at this point, you can get some color. And this tie is usually blue, a light blue. And there you have it, a finished Fred Flintstone.